Light is all that is, really. And this is significant because to get to physical matter, all that has happened is light energy has compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed. Dr. Sue Mortar renowned international speaker, master of bioenergetic medicine, and a pioneer in the quantum field exploration. The toric field is measurable. The chakras are energy centers, but they are also kind of junction points where consciousness is becoming chemistry. Everything is consciousness. This is the foundation of what science is currently revealing. I miss creating my own content from the days before I started podcasting. So I started a personal channel where I just share my own thoughts, my personal experiences and teachings. Follow me here. Hello, Dr. Sue. Thank you so much for joining me. There's questions I've wanted to ask you for a long time. Oh, but, beautiful. Well, perfect opportunity. <laughs> yes. So let's start at the beginning, in a nutshell, who is Dr. Sue Mortar and what do you do? Mm, well, I am a doctor and a teacher, and I am the founder of Mortar Institute for Bioenergetics. Um, from working in my clinic with with natural health care methods for, for decades, I I also had an opening in consciousness through meditative practices that completely illuminated a reality that I had no idea existed, and uh, it became the focus of my life. And I began trying to translate what I was experiencing into my practices with patients and clients, and I started finding that they were getting better faster and staying better longer. And so I started to codify what we were doing and distill it down into some some basic principles and premises that we were operating from that were allowing people to get these 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 better results in their in their healing on a physical level, on an emotional level, spiritual level, et cetera. And so from all of that, I began becoming more of a teacher and had had finally had to release my my presence as a as the owner of my clinic, and I really devoted my time to teaching full time and began to recognize that there were additional ways that people could embody the practices that I was teaching and sharing. And so I began to develop a form of yoga that is called body awake yoga that is allowing us to anchor our consciousness in the core of the body so that we're not escaping into our heads or diverting or deflecting into our heads all the time and living from our mental body self, but rather being able to draw from the deep wisdom that is inherent in everyone that is only accessible when we are literally embodying rather than just contemplating. And so I travel the world now teaching people all these principles and sharing them in deep intimate conversations such as this and also take people to sacred sites around the world to work with the energies that are there as a means of supporting the embodiment practices that we're doing so it goes on and on i'm very busy i'm doing lots of things all the time and have devoted my life to to truly serving humanities solving their great mystery that causes them so much pain basically teaching people to learn to live from the soulful presence versus being trapped in the personality in a nutshell. Thank you so much for the work that you do. It's impacted my life and I'm sure so many others. There's um, a lot to dive into there. Let's start with your profound mystical experience you had that changed the course of your life. So I was, I was drawn to meditation and I didn't really know why. Actually, it was in an attempt to resolve headaches that I was starting to generate because I was living in my head all the time. Even though I was raised with energy medicine practices, I was raised in natural health care. I've never gone to the doctor and taken an antibiotic for some ailment that I've had because I was raised understanding that the body has the ability to heal itself. And, and all we have to do is align the energies and allow them to flow in a way that allows for that healing to take place, that we are built, inherently built to be able to achieve. And if it's not happening, there's a reason. So I was raised with all those principles. And yet I was developing headaches while I was working in my clinic, helping other people with their 
their headaches. I was developing them on my own. And so I was drawn to meditation to try to, you know, maybe find some reprieve. And not only did my headaches disappear, but I I started having and immediately having transcendent experiences of multi dimensions and and multiple levels of consciousness were just coming together in ways I had no no idea. I wasn't trying to become enlightened. I wasn't pursuing that. I was just there and it was innocently unfolding. In fact, I'm glad that I didn't even know it was something to try for because I would have tried my way right out of ever relaxing into allowing these openings to occur because that was my personality at the time to drive and push and go make it happen. And it doesn't work when it comes to truly surrendering into our deep, pure, true self. And so I instantly started having these awakenings. And and the one of the first ones that occurred was was just transformational to me. I was I was it transported into another realm. I was me, but I wasn't in a physical body. I was suspended above the earth um, so high that the earth was about the size of a marble below me. And I was embedded into it as this ray of light. And I could see in every direction simultaneously, not just 360, but spherically. I could look in different directions behind me, in front of me, the same I had free will. I could I could take a big breath or a little breath, but every time I took a breath of any sort, this beautiful horizon, this pink iridescent blanket of light would rise up when I would inhale and it would lower as I would exhale and, and rest upon this horizon. It was the horizon itself. And I wasn't taking anything. I wasn't on a, you know, a shamanic journey, taking ayahuasca or doing mushrooms or any of those things that people do. It was, it was just my consciousness and not to say anything negative about those means that lots of people are, you know, in, investigating for the reasons of accessing these higher realms. But I, I do want to share that it, it just unfolded naturally and, and it can for anyone and it doesn't have to for someone to transform or to change or to heal or to awaken. We, we don't have to see things we can have knowings, we can have deep understandings, and we can learn to trust those deep understandings. And it will actually be incorporated into our lives faster than when we're having these lucid, phenomenal experiences, you know, per se. And so, so here I am as this ray of light suspended above the earth, you know, breathing this. And really what I, what I want to share about that is that it, it had a significance to it in that there was nothing missing. There was nothing broken. There was nothing to become, nothing to achieve. There was nothing wrong. And I knew that that was the truth of all of us. And this beautiful light, this brilliant light that I was in was 10 times brighter than the brightest day in the desert that I had ever seen. And yet I didn't want to shield myself from it. I was that. I was that light. I was one with it. And and it was becoming a different vibration as I would breathe. And I felt that it was becoming love in an instant. I knew that that's what was happening is this light was becoming love and we were feeding it to the planet. And I knew that this was true about all of us, that this is what we're doing, that we're waking up to the dense versions of ourselves by, by allowing our breath and the light that we truly are to exist. So the filters were pulled back and I was seeing and perceiving and experiencing this deeper truth, this truer version of who and what we are. And it was completely fulfilling and satiating. And there was, as I said, there was no distortion or, or disruption to it whatsoever. And I knew that I had always been that, that that was the truth of who I was. And I knew that it was true about all of us. And that the degree to which we allow that in our lives will determine how things are transformed into perceiving them differently, how things are transformed into different circumstances than what, what meets the eye initially. There's a, another realm behind what we're doing that is truly dictating an opportunity for us to wake up to a greater amount of light, a greater amount of love that is available to us, a greater potential, a greater possibility, a different exchange. And, and so that kind of set me into a different way of looking at life and living into things differently than I had been prior. 
it changed my approach to everything and continues to change my approaches as I discover deeper and deeper versions of myself that have that have yet to open to these to these truths. And as we continue to evolve, you know, what we have to offer humanity and in, into our own lives evolves. And so it's an ever, it's, a, it's, an, it's a, an alive teaching that's happening. I'm not teaching something that existed thousands of years ago and we just have to study it. I'm teaching people how to walk into that, that realm and live it awake in their own lives too. So there's a long answer to your question. Yes. Thank you for sharing and going into so much detail with your experience. One thing that I wanted to ask you about is if you could explain a little bit more about this light becoming love. I hear so many near-death experiencers talk about it. There are some spiritual texts that talk about this, but do you understand the mechanism behind that or could you explain it a little bit more for us? Sure. I have to take a moment to share with you information that completely transformed my health. Most of my life, I struggled with fatigue. I was so tired just two short years ago that I couldn't even sit on the couch to watch a movie with my family on the weekend. And then I discovered Carrie Bennett's teachings on quantum and circadian biology. In just a short couple of weeks of implementing super simple steps like temperature therapy, red light therapy, getting outside and active, grounding my feet to the earth, my energy levels completely transformed and have held steady for the past two years. Carrie has packaged all this information into a comprehensive course called Quantum Reset Basics. It could not be more in alignment for me to share this course with you. Find the link to Carrie's Quantum Reset course right here and in the description and pinned comment. Thank you to Carrie Bennett for partnering with me in this video. Now back to the show. So, you know, light is all that is really. It's the highest vibrational frequency of energy that exists and everything is energy. So that energy exists on a spectrum of high vibration to low vibration. And we are actually the entire spectrum. The truth of us at foundational level is this light and light compresses into form. And this is significant because to get to physical in matter, all that has happened is light energy has compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed and compressed and generated physical, you know, things that we can pick up. Like this glass is energy that's compressed into form. The chair that you're sitting in is energy that is compressed into form. These bodies are energy that are compressed into shapes and such. And so, so the very first compression from the unified field of, of light, of high frequency energy, of the backdrop of existence itself, the very first compression generates this vibration that we call love. And so when people are referencing that this light becomes this love, it is because as we're directing our attention back into physical form from these expansive experiences that we have, that compression is starting. We're compressing and compressing our consciousness. We're compressing and compressing our awareness toward the physical reality. And so that very first compression generates this experience, this energy, this vibration that we know as love. That's what we call love. It's exhilarating and fulfilling and beautiful and wonderful and, and it's alive and it's capable of dissolving issues and forgiveness is an example of infusing love into an entanglement and and so forth and so when we when we experience love we are we are as high in our vibrational expression as we can be and still be in physical form beyond that we just we just become the light and so it's right there that is offering us this this blissful experience this ananda this ecstatic vibrational truth called love and so that's why everyone is trying to find love and why love matters and why they sh shun away from love why they'll never be hurt like that again and it has to do with love and and all of that it's this focal point because it's the most important thing that we will ever master meaning we will master the mind's opportunity to experience love 
no matter what. When we begin to awaken, when we begin to heal, it is because we are training ourselves to master our mind, to allow love to be bigger than it was before in our priority system. Where we're reprioritizing, we're reevaluating. I'd rather be loving than be mad. I'd rather be loving than be hurt. I'd rather be loving than be alone. I'd rather be loving than be right. And so, when we start to put those pieces together, life life changes in a very big way. If everything is made up of light that's compressed into love, which I 100% believe, why is it that we experience so much of life as separation, pain, loss, suffering? Yeah, great question. And that's because we get ahead of ourselves. We, 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 we move from being that light and being that love to landing here in this physical world, opening our eyes and seeing all these bright, shiny things, right? Seeing all the, the activity and the people and the places and the circumstances, and we get caught up in the movie instead of remembering that we are this light compressing into form, projecting a movie out on a movie screen and then walking into it. That's what's really going on. But we get caught up in the movie, just like if you've ever gone to the movie theater and you're sitting in the movies and you're all caught up in the movie itself and you're gripping the chair or you're, you're talking back to the person on the screen, you get sucked into the movie. That's what's happened with us. And when we do that, we're not bringing the whole of us with us as we go into the movie. We're splitting off of the true self and just over here operating as an isolated separate self instead of remembering that we are a continuum that is also moving itself onto this movie screen. So we then perceive ourselves to be separate. It's not true, but that's all we're aware of because we got ahead of the game. We, we got pulled out into the outer world thinking that that's what was real, but really the outer world is just projecting back to us how we're doing at remaining integrated as this ongoing continual flow of energy down that whole spectrum from light all the way to physical form. And so we just start thinking of ourselves as the physical form instead of remembering and experiencing ourselves all the way along that continuum. So when we stop thinking and we start feeling, we're moving up the continuum. When we are not only feeling, but we're witnessing what we're feeling and we're not caught up in our felt emotions, but we're witnessing them, we move up the spectrum a little bit more. And when we are stilling ourselves enough in the love that is available, we begin to drop into a deeper version of ourselves altogether. And that is the doorway that we have access into multiple dimensions and other realities, other versions of ourselves in those realities and all sorts of things that open us up to like, oh, I had no idea I was all of this. I just thought I was this this individual here trying to make life work way out here on the level of the movie screen. I didn't realize I was actually the ray of light that was coming out of the movie projector and that I was the projector and that I was the light that's even allowing for a projector to be invented, you know, and exist. So it's, it's quite a conversation people to get into, but the reason that we then are in pain is because we're perceiving ourselves to only be a fraction of who and what we really are. And just like it's hard when someone that you love only or care about only sees a part of you or sees a part of you in a certain way that isn't the whole truth of you, it hurts. The same thing is true and even magnified because we're doing the same thing to ourselves. We're not we're not seeing and living into the fullness of our being. And so we're in a constant state of pain and we don't even know why. And it's because we're not being seen by ourselves. We're not seeing ourselves wholly and fully. So we feel slighted. We feel like something's missing, like, like we've been, like we've been gypped or, or, you know, the world doesn't get us or that it doesn't work out or that we're, we're alone, but it isn't the truth. It's just, it's just an entanglement that the mind gets in when it's operating as that separate self. And all of those experiences then get projected onto other people 
when it's really ourselves. So we get mad when someone else doesn't get us, but we're really upset for a different reason. We're really upset because we don't get us. We're not getting us. We're not allowing enough stillness to, to allow ourselves to come back up this spectrum and experience the magnificence of our, of our whole true selves, if you will. That is such an interesting point because so often we do feel gypped or disappointed if people don't understand us or respect us the way we want. And yet what you're saying is really we're not giving that to ourselves. 100%. I mean, and we can approach that from a psychological standpoint, like a counseling kind of, kind of disposition where we're saying, well, you know, you're upset that your family member or your partner or somebody isn't delivering things in this way, but are you delivering that for yourself? And a person will say, oh yeah, I guess I'm not. I'm really not taking care of myself. I'm really not listening to myself. I'm really not trusting myself. And and so, so you know, it makes sense that I would then experience that in the movie. I would experience that in the outer world because that's what's going on in here. And, and that is true. And it's a great explanation to the whole and there is more there is there is a reality that we can experience that is a greater version of who we are and that can come to us through meditation and through the practices that i teach in a deep inward journey to discover the vastness of our being and when we are in that discovery and in a regular appreciation of that it kind of becomes less important to us that those around us get us and we're not so desperate trying to create these relationships and we're not bargaining and selling out in order to belong because it's not about that and we feel it and we know it and we're having an experience of something bigger and so then when we stop putting so much pressure on these relationships they're fine you know, they, they heal, they improve because we're not, we're not in it. Like our life depends on it. We're not in it. Like my okayness depends on your acceptance of me, which makes us a little bit more desperate than we really need to be. Instead, we recognize and experience our wholeness and we're available then to just share and hold space for someone else or to offer up, you know, solutions in circumstances when they're struggling instead of getting up, caught up in, you know, that entanglement of, of desperation that happens inside of, you know, our humanity when we're, when we're feeling disconnected. We want connection and we think that connection has to come from the outer world and it can, but it won't, it's a, it's, that's treating a symptom instead of really addressing the cause. And the real cause for that feeling of disconnect is internal there. And so what I'm teaching people to do is build circuitry to connect the dots, to build the circuitry inside, to perceive the whole continuum, to feel that, that we are this unified field that is compressing itself into a funnel, into a channel, which hits the earth, and rises up and cycles around in this way. And it creates this measurable toric field flow of energy that is the truth of us, this invisible energy flow that's happening always. And it builds a physical body inside of it by compressing and compressing and compressing which is this body that we're living in. And we think this is who we are because it, we can see it and touch it and feel it and so forth. But, but it's the effect of us. It's not who we are. It's something that we've created in order to be here in this physical dimension. Now, that's a very deep conversation, and I hope that your listeners are interested in such things. But, but the whole idea is when we come inward, we can connect the dots and we can live as the whole full true self that we are. And a byproduct of that is the pe we attract people into our lives that are also interested in meeting us in that way. And we have a different life experience. Yes, my viewers are absolutely interested in this and I want to dive more deeply into it. So in your work, you emphasize the idea of humans as energetic beings. And I have to say that this was transformational. I even have the page marked in the book. It's in the chapter, The Invisible You, Bioenergy Basics, and you have the the little that's, Taurus yeah, man. That's that Taurus field flow that I'm speaking about that hits the earth and rises up and cycles around again. Exactly, yes. And that was transformational for me because I was raised as a Christian and I was always told, you're not the body, you're the spirit. And I always wanted to know what is the spirit. And, you know, even after I left 
my Christian roots, I still 100% believe that I'm not this body, but what is this? And you make it so tangible. So wow. what is this Taurus field? Yes, beautifully. So you are the energy that is flowing in this toric field pattern. Let me see if I have an image here that I can kind of point to while we're talking. Are your is your audience going to be seeing things or just hearing us? Is it? Yeah, is, on it'll go on YouTube, so there will be a video there. Okay, excellent. So, so here's an image of this unified field, and this is. This is like all of the energy that is the light that we've been speaking about. And it compresses and compresses and compresses and compresses into this funnel and compresses and descends and compresses and compresses and hits the earth and turns and rises and rises and rises as high as it can go, given the amount of circuitry that you have inside the system plugged up, plugged in, rather connected. And it then spouts out the top and cycles around and it recycles and recycles. And inside of that flow, that repetitive flow, we build physical tissues. We become liquid crystalline structure. We become flowing in streams of energy, like the streams of energy that we call meridians that acupuncture uses. It then continues to compress and compress into liquid crystalline structure that becomes cellular form, bones, organs, all of this. It's all developing inside this moving energy field. And so then we're here projecting that out into the world and moving moving out into the world to this vehicle that we've created. And so here's sort of a little close-up of what's happening inside that toric field flow that you're asking about. So that energy compresses into that funnel, descends, hits the earth, rises up, cycles around and around and around. And here's how most people are functioning as it begins to try to rise, there are areas in our life that we are shut down in or that we are not integrated yet in. And as a byproduct of that, we have to go around. They're sort of like potholes in a super highway. You go around it. And so we go around and we compensate for all these ways of, of being that have been you know, altered because of past pain patterns or circumstances where we shut down. Maybe we were loving and somebody hurt us. And so we, boom, you know, we shut down in some of these areas. And so the energy is now bypassing all of that. It's trying to get around things as best it can. And as such, it creates a wobble, which creates a distortion in this toric field flow. And that distortion causes us to stand here, look out through a distorted energy field, and we see a distorted reality. We see one that doesn't care, or that isn't fun, or that it doesn't like us, or 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 won't connect. You no know, matter what we try to do, we're not successful. Those kinds of failure perceptions are distortions in the field. They're not true. It's not true, and so it might as well be because it presents a life that we're living. And so what we're doing with the energy codes is building circuits across these gaps so that we can move from this toward this to constantly perfecting the flow. And so the toric field is the spirit that you were told about. It is spirit. It's invisible energy. You know, spirituality would talk about that as spirit. Science would talk about it as the energy being, the quantum self. And this is what I love about quantum science is that it's allowing us to speak about such things in a in a scientific type community, whereas it used to be completely separate. When our science was based on linear physics only, there was no space for spirituality to coexist. But when quantum science came onto the scene and shared with us that your consciousness is determining your, your structure, your consciousness is determining your physiology, your consciousness is determining your physical life, and in other, in other words, quantum science is showing us that you find what you're looking for. In other words, to, to break it down even more, quantum science was, was testing to see if the tiniest particles that are the foundation of our existence here, if we measure them, are they made of, of substance, fo like form, like something, or are they energy that's just operating in waves of flowing, of a flowing nature? And so when they set up the equipment to test if it was matter, it was. And when they set up the equipment to test if these tiny particles were energy, they were. It was yes. It's matter if you're looking for matter. It's energy if you're looking for matter, if you're looking for energy. And so what quantum science then translates into is 
if you're looking for a problem, you have one. And if you're looking for a solution, you have one. And if you're just looking to create, that's what happens. And if you're a victim, that's what happens. If your disposition is that you're at the effect of your environment and there's nothing you can do and you're constantly abdicating, then, then you create that reality. And if you're operating as a creator and you're saying, yes, I'll have that. Yes, please. Thank you more. I'll do that. I would love to. Then you're operating as a creator. And, and this is where humanity is operating right now. We're trying to figure out, am I a victim of my story and my past and my circumstances and my wounds and my triggers and my buttons? Or am I going to use those to my advantage? Am I trying to avoid my triggers or am I going to lean into my triggers and allow them to serve my awareness of, oh, there's something more here for me to own not like you have to own your problems, but I mean, there's more to me than I ever knew. And if I will lean in, I can discover that part of me and be more empowered and be more capable than I ever was before. Instead of, you know, I have these wounds and I need to, you know, dictate everyone's, you know, activity around me to protect me from being triggered by my wounds. You know, what what's happening right there is someone is just like linear physicists would have us operate, they're saying my environment and my past and my genetic inheritance is bigger than anything I can ever do. And so I'm going to have to protect myself. But what quantum science is showing us is that actually we can do something about that. We can turn on and turn off our own genetic coding. We can decide what's going to be inherited into our lifetime, or we can change it and shape shift it. And we just have to come upon some real, realistic, tangible, consistent ways to do something with that so that we're not lost at sea and we're not overwhelmed and we're not, you know, automatically assuming the worst and that we can't do it or that we can't handle it, but that we can and that we can move into building circuitry inside of our own system, electromagnetic energy flow that then influences the nervous system to memorize new synapsing patterns that allow us to have new come-froms that are automatically more capable because they're reflecting more of the all of who we are, our creator self instead of our reactor self. So I'll stop there and see where you want to go with this. But but that's uh, kind of how that toric field fits into all of this and, and how your teachings, what you were raised understanding is true. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not the whole story, you know, in terms of, it's not, it's not incorrect. It's just, it's just not complete. It's not complete. Right. So we're completing the conversation. We're gathering more and more information and learning how to live into what we're discovering through quantum science. And, and that's what I'm doing with the work that I do is trying to bring that into, oh my gosh, you know, how do I, how do I utilize these, these amazing things that science is showing us? How do we put it to work for us? Absolutely. One thing that I really love about your model with the energy codes is how well it fits in with the Eastern tradition of the chakras and the energy system. I'm curious what science there is to back up that model now. To back up the model of the chakras or? Yeah, the and the, like the whole toral field and the chakras and everything. Okay. So, so the toric field is measurable. It is a, a real thing. It's, it's measurable. It's reproducible. The Institute of Heart Math is, is uh, referencing this. There is an, a smaller toric field around the heart space that is more concentrated, more potent than the larger one that we're, that we're referencing here. You know, the, the science of bioenergetics is, is completely showing us that there's a flow of energy through the body. It's measurable, reproducible, and there's a pattern to it. And that's this toroid field or this toric field flow that we're referencing. And the chakras are energy centers, but they are also kind of junction points where consciousness is becoming chemistry. And so, so the, the study of epigenetics is really, really turning on the lights when it comes to this part of our anatomy and our physiology and our basic science understanding of, of the human system 
in that we know through epigenetics that there are these little antennas on the surface of every cell that are picking up information from the environment and translating it inside the cell and telling the cell what to do. Either produce that chemical that you're good at producing, that you're built to produce, or don't do anything along those lines right now based upon this information that we're receiving, you know, through these antennas that are picking up on this, this energy in the form of 11 billion bits of information bombarding us every millisecond. And it's right here. It's us. And so what happens right there is energy is becoming chemistry and we're producing chemicals in the body based upon the energies that we're picking up on. And so, so what I'm doing with the energy codes is making sure that people are grounded and centered and integrated so that we pick up energies from the environment, but it doesn't cause us to go into fight or flight and produce chemistries based on fight or flight that keeps us in a fight or flight reality. But instead, we're grounded and integrated and we're picking up on these energies and we're transmuting them and translating this into different chemistries that are then that are then allowing a rising of something potent on the inside of us to move its way up through the whole body, which takes us into deep spiritual conversations about enlightenment and embodiment back into Eastern principles of uh, Buddhism and Hinduism in terms of not the religious idea, but the practices that they were doing in terms of embodying higher and higher states of consciousness all the time in the ancient East, as you represent. So the science of epigenetics and quantum science and the science of bioenergetics and psycho-spirituality and the chemistries that are generated from all of that are definitely this intersection point where these levels of consciousness that the chakra system represents have an opportunity to become a confluence, become integrated, to become one interacting system that is constantly supporting all the other layers of consciousness. So I could translate that to say that all the chakras are helping all the other chakras open and integrate and become enlivened. And that's what we want. We want to create an environment inside of ourselves where each of these energy centers can help the other energy center to open and flourish so that we're not sometimes loving and sometimes powerful and sometimes creative and sometimes smart and sometimes able to speak our truth and other times shut down and other times disempowered and other times unloving and other times, you know, guarded as our primary focus, but that we're available all the time to draw upon all of our resources anytime and to be able to respond in any situation with with a grounded centered loving presence and take down walls where we used to be confined by them to walk through veils that we used to think were just you know there and or even not aware that they were there and to dissolve all of this so that we can operate in in a more holistic fashion all the time and be self-healing and self-generative of new ideas and tap our creative genius instead of just trying to get by. Yes. Something you said really stood out to me and it's that the chakras or energy centers, whatever word people use, are connected to consciousness. So is that a situation where each chakra represents a different aspect of consciousness or is it more like we're evolving up from the root up to the crown and bringing in more consciousness yes to all of that okay mm -hmm. so the energy centers the chakras and and i i you know the western world is starting to use the word energy centers more and more and more and it's it's a little bit you know interesting because they're chakras and they've always, they've been there for thousands of years and they've been being stood, uh, understood and studied and taught in the East for, th for thousands of years. And so here we are over here in the Western world thinking we've discovered these energy centers and no, we haven't, they've been there forever. <laughs> and, and, and it's, and I don't want people to lose the richness that comes with a deep study of the, of the chakras system because it will take you much further than just just the intellectual understanding that these are centers of energy and that's why i always try to make a point that there is a 
there is an, an, an interwoven connection, so interwoven, it can never be separated with levels of consciousness because the energy centers, the chakras, are reflections of consciousness. They are areas of concentration of the various components of our consciousness that we are. So, they're, the, they don't exist in and of themselves. Everything is consciousness. This is the, the foundation of what science is currently revealing, is that everything is based in consciousness. There, our entire reality is based in consciousness. This, this world is energy that is, that is awake, and the degree that we are awake is the degree to which we will master this world. And, and meaning we'll heal ourselves, we'll get better, you know, at living life in relationship and better at the jobs that we're doing and all of that. So, so it's all consciousness and consciousness comes and starts this compressive process of building this body through this toric field and, and it builds energy centers along the way. So the parts of my consciousness, the aspects of my consciousness that know that are the root chakra and the parts of my consciousness that know that and can stay knowing that and be in relationship with you are my second chakra. And the parts of my consciousness that can know that and be in relationship with you and still elevate and empower ourselves to take that out into the world are is this third chakra. And our awareness of all of that in an integrated fashion allows us to experience the love that is here, that is the part of consciousness that is the heart chakra. And our ability to then build things based upon the power of love comes through our throat chakra. So it's, it's the building of the chakras that consciousness is doing as it's illuminating itself here in the physical dimension. Is, is that track for you? Are you able to yes. follow what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. So the, the chakra system and the energy centers that we've named it in the Western world, but the chakra system is a byproduct of consciousness. Consciousness is coming into form. That's what's happening. And it's doing so one layer of itself at a time. Now, it doesn't have to be that we fully awaken in the root chakra, and then we fully awaken in the second chakra, and then we fully awaken in the third chakra. It's more like a keyboard that you play. You don't only play one key and then the next and then the next and expect to have a song, right? You're playing back and forth, back and forth, up and down this keyboard. And we're doing the same. We're waking up here and then we're waking up here and then we're waking up here and then more here and then more here. And then we come back to where we started, more here, more here, more here. And we're up leveling constantly in the order in which we as a soulful self came in to to take on this life experience for the reasons that we did. So you may be here developing your brilliance. I may be here developing my ability to love in more situations, or someone else might be developing their courageousness, and someone else might be developing their rootedness. And so we're leading with those things that we're working on right now. And that's why it's so important to not take it personal when someone projects onto you, here's who you are and here's what you're doing, to not absorb that because they can only see through the filter that they're looking through based on what they're working on. And we have to allow them to do theirs and we do ours and we have to responsibly work on ourselves instead of projecting our own stuff onto someone else, always monitoring and always deciding what they're up to and what they need to be learning or what's going on with them. It doesn't work. What works is when we take care of our own business and when we integrate and appreciate our own process. And when we do with love and compassion, the love and compassion that it takes to do this thing that we're doing here, when we develop that for ourselves, knowing how hard it is and how much work it takes to do this until we discover the loving way to do it, then it becomes easy. But when we have that appreciation, we can allot, allot that for other people too. We can allow them their space and their timing in their own way. And in doing so, um, we, we develop a compassionate community that is supporting one another in our up-leveling. 
And, and that's what we're here learning how to do. That's what we're struggling to learn how to do as a humanity right now. But the good news is that we're struggling with it more than ever means we're on the move. We're, we're working it out. We're in this scrum down. And it's important to realize that that's all that's happening when it comes to, you know, looking into the world and thinking we're falling apart. It, it, we're not. We're just growing and we're kicking and screaming, you know, with the growing pains. Yes. So we could spend hours talking about the seven energy codes that you teach. But for people watching this interview, are there any, maybe just a couple practical steps that they can take away from this interview about how to begin building that internal circuitry? Absolutely. So, you know, a first thing that many people know is belly breathing is going to help because it pulls us down out of the out of the mental body and drops us down into the wisdom self. And so belly breathing is very, very helpful. I also am constantly inviting people to learn to breathe up and down that whole central channel that we're speaking about that's the center of the storm when it comes to this toric field, you know, creative process that we're trying to master. And so by breathing through the central channel, you're activating an integrator between all the energy centers of the chakra system. You're integrating them. And and allowing them an opportunity to talk to each other. It's sort of like, you know, building a bridge between neighbors and allowing them to like, oh, I didn't know you were there. Thanks, wonderful, thanks for influencing me in this way. So if we take a breath from the earth, right up into the belly, just breathe up into the belly from the earth, just intend it, just intend it, and breathe up into the belly. And then as we exhale, let's exhale through the solar plexus, through the heart, through the throat, through the center of the brain, and just shoot your breath out the top of your head. I mean, it might sound just like, what? and just do it, just intend it, and then take a breath from overhead right through the center of the brain, through the throat, through the chest, into the belly. Just draw it down, and then exhale, drop that right into the earth when you exhale. And then when you inhale, do the same thing again, inhale up from the earth into the belly, and then when you exhale, allow that breath to come up through your solar plexus, through your heart, through your throat, through the center of your brain, and out the top of your head, and then inhale, from overhead right down through the center of the brain, through the throat, to the chest, to the belly, and exhale again right down into the earth. So that's a central channel breath. And when people start doing that, they start to, if you'll do that regularly, like all day long you're going to be breathing, take some conscious breaths and make it be a belly breath and then make it be a central channel breath, always breathing into the core and exhaling out one end of the channel or the other, and then breathing into the core and then exhaling out the other end of the channel. And that central channel breathing will allow you to start moving this toric field energy, it starts churning it more intensely because you're bringing consciousness to it, which enhances its ability to do its thing. Another thing that I would recommend that people do is learn to identify that they've been dispersing their energies versus when they're gathering their energies. So these little packets of energy that we were measuring with quantum science to determine what the foundation of reality is, one of the, the smallest particles that we work with are, are called photons. And so photons follow your focus, they follow your thoughts, they follow your attention. Wherever you put your attention, that's where they go. And so energy flow is where your attention goes. So what we're doing is bringing your attention up and down this central channel. And so when you allow yourself to be controlled by someone or something in your world that pushes your buttons or trips your triggers or really upsets you or gets under your skin because they don't understand you or it's not going your way, your energy goes to them. And now you're giving them your power. And so the invitation is pull your energy back onto self. And it's an ancient practice that we translate to calling it subject, object, subject. And in doing so, we want to pull our energy off of the object of our attention back onto subject or back onto self. So it's like self, other, self, subject, object, subject. So right now, if someone was just in the doorway of your room that pushes your buttons or that, you know, has power over you in some way, you know, just watch how your energy just goes to that. And just secretly, stealthfully, just pull that energy back. Just bring it right back here onto, onto self. Bring it onto you and, and allow yourself to feel it. And you'll notice a difference when you play around with this, that when you're on object, you feel empty and your mind starts going 
over time, your mind will start writing stories, focusing on the wrong things, being all dispersed and, you know, and, and not empowered. And when you pull your energy back onto self, there is an empowerment that happens and you'll notice how it feels in your body to be you. Now, it's the true self that you're starting to get in touch with. So subject, object, subject is a second practice that I would recommend. So belly breathing and central channel breathing would be one. Subject, object, subject would be a second thing. And I'm going to take just a few seconds and describe a third thing that can truly be life-changing for, for everyone. These two practices that I've just shared, are they are inherently transformative. If you'll simply do that, it will change you. And you can also do this additional thing that is something that I love teaching inside of deeper coursework and into the depths that we go. And it is a circuit building practice. So it's how you begin to build a bridge across those gaps that caused that wobble in your system and the distortion in your field in the first place. And so when you think about something that is upsetting to you, you can use this in the other direction as well toward things that you dream of, but, but, but it's, there's a real charge associated when, when people are upset about something. So it's easy to learn to do this when you're working with something that's been upsetting to you. And instead of saying, you know, why do you do that? Or talking about the other person or everything that, that you see that they do wrong, instead of doing that, just take your attention to your own body and say, ask a question, where in my body could I build some circuits to allow me to better handle when people are this way or when things are going this way or when things unfold like they do? And your mind is gonna go somewhere in your body instantly because it's instantly gonna ask, answer the question. It will insta instantly answer the question. Your mind will go to your throat, or it'll go to your gut, it'll go to your heart, it'll do something. And the invitation is slow down enough to remember to ask the question. Where in my body could I build some circuits to better be able to handle these types of situations? And your mind is going to go somewhere. It's going to go somewhere. It's going to go somewhere. And the invitation is this. Hug that area inside your body, wherever your mind just went. Just hug it. Just give it a squeeze so that your mind can stabilize on it. Because your mind's going to go darting all around. And you want it to stabilize on something. You want it to become still. And so if it's here, fine. If it's here, fine. If it's here, fine. It doesn't matter where. Just hug it on the inside. And if you then sit there with it and just hold on to it and breathe, just, just right there, just sit there and be right there with that part of you, what you're actually doing is discovering the parts of you that splatted in your original dispersal landing here. And you never really came back home to this part of you. So sit right there with it. And if you sit there for just a moment, a few seconds, something will start to soften. Something will start to drop in. And you're going to feel at home in yourself, in a space that you have, you've not ha you have not before, that you have not activated in this same way before. And when you start to feel that drop in and that opening and that warmth, then you take a big breath. And then you exhale that breath up or down the channel, whichever direction feels most appropriate to you. And then you take a breath from that end of the channel right through this special space and then exhale it through the other end of the channel. And you're going to start carving a pathway th right through the walls that have been the barriers in your life. And by working with the raw energy, instead of working with the story and working it out with the people, you're going to change and empower your ability to stay present so that those conversations in the future can be more loving and more kind and more empowered and more clearly representing you in the mix at the same time. So it's a simple, fast circuit building project for you to practice, you know, after we're done with this conversation, you know, take some time today before you fall asleep tonight, practicing that. And you'll see that you could be working with life completely differently than you have been. There's another world right behind the scenes and it's inside you. And there's another one after that, but this is a great one to begin working with to discover your empowered self. Wonderful. Thank you for that. I'm going to finish up with three quick questions that I ask all of my guests. First, yes. what is your deepest passion? Oh my, sharing the truth about life. We're doing it right now. Yes. What is your highest joy? Doing the same. When I practice it myself, I would say, you know, it brings up the joy that's in there. And so 
my greatest joy is living day to day in this way. And finally, if you could give one message to every person on the planet, what would it be? I feel like we've been absorbed in that answer this whole time. Uh, I would say there is nothing broken. There's nothing missing. There is nothing wrong. We've simply been uh, attending out, outwardly, and it's time to bring your attention to an inward gaze, the inward function. Pratyahara, it's about withdrawing your senses and doing this work as we're referencing. I would love for humanity to be practicing that. Thank you so much for sharing of your time and your wisdom with us today. Could you share with the viewers where they can find you and any projects or books, courses, anything that you have going on? Well, sure. The book that you held up is called The Energy Codes, and you can find that anywhere. I have a website that has an amazing amount of options that someone can engage in. We have lots of complimentary work out in the world, lots of free content available. We do healing transmissions once a month that are complimentary and many, many other things. You can find me at drsuemorter.com. That's D-R-S-U-E-M-O-R-T-E-R.com. And, and it's pretty self-explanatory there. And if you have any questions at all, write us at info at mortar.com and we have an entire team standing by constantly to help direct you in the proper direction for live programs, in-person programs, online courses, journeys that we take to sacred sites around the world as well, and, and Body Awake Yoga memberships where you can practice these circuit building exercises right in the middle of yoga asanas all at the same time if you're interested in that. So I also have a podcast launching right about now. So you can keep an eye open for that. It's called The Art of Awakening. And we'll be doing lots of promotional things right there to bring more content like this to people on a regular basis. So wonderful. I'll have Dr. Sue's links in the show notes as well as the link to the free meditation that she's offering the viewers of this podcast. So check out the show notes for the links. Dr. Sue, thank you so much. My great joy. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing to bring us all together. So blessings to you all. Thank you for watching and listening. Your views, likes, comments, and shares truly make the biggest difference in supporting this channel. Don't forget to check the show notes for all the links to today's guests, as well as my links. You'll find me on social media at Love Covered Life, my website, lovecoveredlife.com, and the Be A Guest link for anybody who would like to be a guest on the channel. I have great news. Love Cover Life podcast is coming available on audio podcast. You can find it wherever you listen to your audio podcasts.